Ready to go. Good afternoon. Welcome to the 2021 college football playoff semifinal at the 86th Goodyear Cotton Bowl Classic. It's our Monday media availability with the number four Cincinnati Bearcats. Joining us on this Zoom is Cincinnati offensive coordinator Mike Denbrock, who will then be followed by quarterback Desmond Ritter. Also occurring at this time on a separate Zoom are interviews with offensive lineman Dylan O'Quinn, wide receiver Alec Pierce, and running back Jerome Ford. Please check your email for the login information to join that session. For the media attending, please be sure the raise hand function is activated to indicate you want to ask a question. When you are called on for your question, please state your name and affiliation before asking your question. Coach Denbrock, thank you for joining us. Please provide us with an opening statement about this week's game versus number one Alabama before we open the floor for questions. Well, thanks very much. Uh, first off, let me uh, <clears throat> semi-apologize for my appearance. We, we just got off the practice field uh, getting ready. We had our Tuesday practice today. Uh, let me just lead off by saying, uh, you know, we're honored to be included in the college football playoff. Um, I think our guys have worked very, very hard for an opportunity like this. Uh, they've beaten down a lot of doors. Uh, they've overcome a lot of obstacles to give themselves this opportunity. Uh, we're excited that it's against the University of Alabama uh, just because of what that program and their head coach represents and Coach Saban and obviously the University of Alabama has been at the top of the college football world for quite some time. And it's a goal that we've had in our program to play for championships. This is an opportunity to kind of continue that goal. Uh, we were able to secure our conference championship, obviously, uh, to give ourselves this opportunity. Uh, but we look forward to, uh, you know, the opportunity to play against the best. And the champs are uh, the University of Alabama, and we get an opportunity to, to see what the Bearcats can, can do. Um, so it's an exciting time for our program. I know it's an exciting time for our players, our coaches, everybody associated with our organization. And, and what we look forward to the most is uh, giving the leadership on our football team that has brought us so far as a program uh, the opportunity on this stage to, uh, to showcase what they're capable of doing. Thank you, Mike. Now we will go to questions from the media. Remember to please activate the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. And our first question will come from Justin Williams with The Athletic. Hey, Coach, how are you? I'm doing good. How, how did you uh, sneak in front of the line? I, I talk to you every week. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe, maybe I'm the only one here talking. <laughs> you, guys, you guys have remade that wide receiver room over, you know, in recent seasons, whether it's and, – and I guess there's a surprisingly lack of – diva status among those guys at least from the outside um how do you recruit to that whether it's homegrown guys like alec and, and tyler and trey or you know somebody like mike that you pull in off the portal well i mean it, it, as you know uh and everybody should know it, it it's been a real emphasis of ours to to try to attract uh as many playmakers uh to get this offense a little bit more explosive uh, over the last couple of years we've been very fortunate to do that uh, as you mentioned, Justin, some as homegrown talent and some uh, through other relationships or prior relationships that we've had. Um, I think the, it, there's a, maybe a misconception that there's no divas in that room. There, there's not a guy in that room that doesn't want the ball every time that we, uh, we call a pass play. Uh, but I think the best thing that we've got going for us uh, throughout the entire offense is an understanding that it's going to take all of us to be successful. Uh, your opportunities will come provided uh, you're where you're supposed to be doing what you're supposed to be doing when you're supposed to be doing it. And uh, those guys, uh, you know, do a great job of doing that. There's a lot of really quality football players in that room. Um, and, and we love the opportunity to, uh, you know, not only be deep and, and have more than one guy available to us to make plays, uh, but give those guys the opportunities to impact the game uh, as we go. Okay, our next question is from Justino Bovenzi. That was the, the best pronunciation of my name I've ever heard, so thank you for that. Um, uh, I go by Tino, I'm with Spectrum News One, Coach. Um, I just wanna ask how preparation has been this week. Um, obviously, uh, COVID and um, reducing the, the chances for spread has been such a big focus and things are kind of going crazy with that. How have you been uh, 
how have you guys been able to keep the guys focused and, uh, you know, staying safe in that regard? Well, Tino, as you know, it, it, for the last year in, in, uh, in more than a year, it's, it's been an incredible challenge to uh, keep their minds focused on the task at hand. And it's something that we talk to them a lot about all the time. Um, it's something the leadership, the players on the team themselves uh, have put a priority on uh, to make sure that uh, we don't limit any opportunities that may come our way uh, by not taking care of the things that we know we can control, which is, you know, social distancing in the media room, wearing a mask when we need to wear a mask, you know, following the guidelines that are set forth for, for everybody out there to try to keep themselves safe. Uh, we don't venture very far from that. I think what we do uh, with, you know, the younger generation, uh, as I call them, is, is just constantly try to remind them and keep it in the back of their minds that, um, you know, you've worked so hard to provide yourself this opportunity. Uh, the last thing we need to do is compromise that by doing something out of character. Uh, and these guys have done a great job of, of, of kind of focusing and making sure that they're doing what they've needed to do to not only stay on the field, but be successful doing it. Yeah, and can I follow that up with uh, just a question on um, Desmond? And uh, since we're going to speak to him next, you know, what, what have you seen from him? You know, obviously he's the leader on the team, but, you know, uh, going through this week, this is, you know, perhaps the biggest game in program history. What have you seen from, from Desmond Ritter uh, leading the guys in, in preparation? Well, I think the best thing that I've seen from Des is that Des is being Desmond. Uh, you know, he, he's not out of character. It's not out of character for him to lead our football team in every way. Um, whether that's vocally, whether that's through his play, through that's how he studies the game, how he prepares himself. Um, he's a great example to everybody around him uh, of how to get ready for a game like this uh, and the challenge that's ahead for us offensively uh, coming up. So um, I think the best thing about it is, you know, he's in his comfort zone, uh, in his comfort zone in a leadership role. Uh, and he's done, not done anything to kind of venture outside of that. He's just been himself, uh, which is plenty good enough to uh, lead this football team. Thank you, Tino. Our next question is from Michael Casagrande of AL.com. Hey, uh, hey, Coach. Uh, just a lot has been made about the group of five status with uh, Cincinnati and playing a team like Alabama. You've coached at the, you know, the, the power five level. What, what tells you about this team, your Cincinnati team, that says that they're on the same level as in Alabama and the, the Power Five conferences. Well, I mean, I <clears throat> I think it's it's strongly led by the senior class that we have. Uh, we we've got a uh, over 33 seniors that have kind of been through the wars and been through the fire, uh, have had disappointments along the way, have had challenges along the way, have had struggles along the way. Uh, and has done nothing as a group and a football team but overcome those things that people put in front of them, uh, whether that's labeling them a non-Power 5 team, whether that's uh, calling them Cinderella or whatever name that, that the you know, people in the media like to come up with to try to describe this group. Uh, I describe them uh, as a football team, uh, some, a group of, of men that have a common goal, um, that grind and fight, and scratch and claw every day to make that a reality. And um, so, uh, you know, I think this is a group because of the leadership that we have uh, that's capable of matching up and in, in having success in any situation. Do you think that the doubts uh, fuel this team's motivation for this group? I, I mean, I hope they grow, they grow motivation from whatever factor they feel like they need to to gain motivation. I, I, I think first and foremost, ab above all else, these guys play for each other. Um, they believe in each other. Uh, they've been through, as I said, the wars together and, and the disappointments together. Uh, this is truly a family uh, of football players, not just a football team. Um, and they support and they play for each other. And uh, that's a pretty strong bond to have and, and leads to a lot of success as these guys have enjoyed. Thank you, Michael. Our next question is from John Talty. John? Hey, Mike. Uh, you played Alabama while you were at Notre Dame um, in the national championship. I'm curious. You know, I know their, their defense has evolved since then, but what might be particularly unique or challenging for you in game planning against a Nick Saban-led defense? I, th I think first and foremost, it's, you know, how athletic they are, um, you know, how uh, 
I won't say complicated or overly complicated, but they give you so many different varieties of looks and, and different change-ups and things that they do. Um, I think that's as much the challenge as anything. And then you combine that with uh, the quality of, of athlete that they have on the defensive side of the ball, whether that be in the front seven, uh, whether that be with the coverage skills in the back end, um, you know, that, that presents some, some real issues. Um, you know, you have to be uh, at least aware of the fact that uh, you're rarely going to get the same look twice, um, that you have to be, you know, on your toes with communication with your guys up front in particular, and, and your quarterback's got to be able to see uh, the multiplicity of the things that they do defensively and be able to decipher it um, with not a lot of time on his hands in the pocket. So um, there, there's so many unique challenges to playing in Alabama. Um, you know, much like the game we, we were in last year, uh, it's the best of the best playing defense. And uh, they're not only great with what they do scheme-wise and, and confusing with what they do scheme-wise, they got great athletes out there doing it. All right, our next question comes from Mitch Lukitz. Hey, Coach. Um, I'm just wondering, I know you guys are, I'm from the Kilbourne News Herald in East Texas. I know you guys have probably seen Alabama by now. Uh, can you tell me, we all know about Will Anderson. Can you tell me, other than Will Anderson, uh, which sounds kind of kind of funny, but can you tell me uh, some of the other players on Alabama's defense that stand, just jump out on them? Well, I, I I'll answer your question probably a little more generally than you hoped, but I, I, my answer would be pick one. I mean, they, they, I think everybody along their defensive front um, is, you know, does a great job with, with body position and leverage and, and understands their fit and where they're supposed to be in the scheme. Um, they've got two really solid linebacker, inside linebackers that can not only uh, run, you know, stop the run, but do a great job in coverage. Uh, they've got press corners that are long that can uh, frustrate the crap out of your wide receivers. Uh, two safeties who, even if you try to isolate them, are going to be a problem trying to create uh, matchups against. Um, so I, I, I don't know that there's certain players that I can single out necessarily just to say that y you can see across the board uh, the quality of player that they have on the defensive side of the ball and uh, that they're well coached, they're fundamentally strong in everything that they do, and, and, and their schemes as solid as anything that we face this year. Thank you, Mitch. Our next question is from Zachary Braziller of the New York Post. Wow, this is good. Don Talty is the sports editor. Um, when you look at Jerome in the year he's had, what? What kind of stands out, what, why he's made such a big leap, and how motivated do you think he's going to be to, to face his old team? My other question was about Jasmine. Well, I think he's, he, he's done a nice job of being fully motivated all year. Um, obviously, playing against a lot of people that uh, maybe you came in with or played with at one time uh, adds a little something to it um, for him. But he, he's been great all year as far as being on top of his game and doing great things. Um, I think, you know, Jerome is a unique type of individual when it comes to running back. Um, he's, he's a hard yard guy, which means he can get in between the tackles and, and, and do the dirty work that running backs need to do sometimes, whether that's falling forward, gaining an extra yard, gaining an extra two yards, whatever that happens to be. Um, and he also has the ability to kind of break out in space and, and make explosive runs and, and score touchdowns, um, you know, with the ball in his hands, uh, and has done a great job of that the entire season. So uh, I think he's a complete back from that standpoint uh, and has certainly added a lot to our offense uh, as the season's gone along. All right, our next question is from Chris Vanini. Hey, Mike, uh, you kind of got asked about it earlier, but um, you guys are uh, – two touchdown underdog, and I'm sure you don't look at that kind of stuff, but is there um, any sense of wanting to prove you guys deserve to be on this stage by your performance? Chris, I hope all's well with you. Um, I don't believe that at all. I mean, I, 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 you know, each kid's going to have kind of his own little motivation thing. I think as a football team, uh, we feel like we've earned our way here. Uh, we feel like and know we belong here. 
So for there to be any outside extra motivation that's needed to get these guys uh, ready to roll or uh, there's enough of a challenge that's going to be standing across the field from us that that deserves our full attention uh, and has our full attention. And, you know, I think the thing that some people forget sometimes about this group of seniors and this this football team in particular is uh, they did everything that people ask them to do uh, to get to this point. Uh, they've been successful 13 straight times that they've taken the field. And, uh, you know, the opportunity that's in front of us uh, to play next, uh, we're, we're, we're well aware of how difficult it's going to be, how much of a fight and a struggle it's going to be, um, but one that I think our, our players are going to be prepared for. And Luke made a comment yesterday that, um, you know, kind of in the, in the middle of the season there when some, some performances maybe didn't go as, as well as you hoped, he, he felt that maybe you guys were putting too much pressure on yourselves. Uh, is, is that kind of the, the same mindset you kind of got to get past going into this game? I definitely think it's a lesson we learned as the season went along. Um, you know, it, it, it's hard to keep um, the players away from social media, obviously, um, ESPN and the like. I mean, God bless them. We, we, we love it all, uh, the Twitter world and all of it. But uh, the fact of the matter is uh, people were trying to label us as this or that or tell us what we needed to do. And you're not doing this well enough. You're not doing that well enough. Well, all we really needed to do was be us and continue to win. Uh, I think over the course of the middle of the season in particular, uh, that was a lesson learned um, for this group of seniors and this football team and for the coaching staff in particular um, to make sure we're saying the right things to these guys and, and not full, filling their heads full of things that really don't matter. Um, what really matters at the end of the day and what we've built our program on is the trust, love, and respect that we have for each other when we walk into that locker room. And, that hasn't changed no matter whether we won by 13 or 30. Um, so uh, we just tried to kind of focus more on that, Chris, than we did the rest of the noise. All right, we have time for just one more question. Our final question will come from Bobby Nightingale. Hey, Coach. Um, you kind of touched upon it a little bit in your answer, saying, you know, the label of Cinderella and the underdog. Uh, just because recruiting is such a big part of the sport, why do you guys think you've had so much success kind of developing, you know, the Desmond Ritters and some of these younger guys like Alec Pierce and, um, you know, guys that were light, lighter recruited than the guys at Alabama and had success? Yeah, I mean, I think that falls on two levels. I think, it, number one, it's identifying um, the right individuals that have the potential for growth, um, to, to grow their game and, and – and combined with a hunger uh, and a, to gain knowledge and to gain experience and to gain strength and to, to put the work in necessary to become better and better and better at what they do. We, we've been very fortunate to have a, have a good track record of ID in those guys uh, and then being able to talk them into coming and playing at the University of Cincinnati. And um, I'd, I'd say secondly, it's, it's the coaching staff. I mean, uh, outside of myself, uh, which I, <laughs> I don't know whether I'd include myself in this or not, but there's some great coaches on this staff, uh, whether that's you know, up and down the line, whether that's on offense or defense. And development is a huge piece of what we feel like our responsibility is to these guys that are in our program, whether they're true freshmen or whether they're seniors or fifth-year seniors. Um, we don't change the model. Uh, we just keep digging and, and, and try to make them better every day and try to find ways from a coaching standpoint uh, that we can help their game grow uh, and put them in a position to have more success. So I think it's a combination of both those things that have, have led to kind of what you're, what you're getting at with your question. Okay, Coach Denbrock, thank you for joining us. Much appreciated. Thank you. Media, please stand by for quarterback Desmond Ritter. Okay, we are now joined by quarterback Desmond Ritter. Please provide us with an opening statement, Desmond, if you can, uh, about the excitement of playing in the college football playoff versus Alabama before we open it up for questions. Yeah, no, first of all, um, thank you for having me. 
Um, you know, we're very excited to get down here, get down to Dallas. Um, we're in a great hotel, a uh, beautiful stadium, definitely one of the biggest that, you know, I think all of us have, have played in or even walked in. Um, but no, we're excited to get down here, play Alabama, um, and show not only ourselves and, you know, but everyone in the country, you know, what we can do against a top team. Now we'll go to questions from the media. Remember uh, to activate the raise hand function to indicate you want to ask a question. And our first question will come from Brandon Seho. Brandon. Hey, Des, kind of a big picture question. I asked you in the beginning of the year, I think after you guys beat Notre Dame, but just to look back at when you went into that game at, at UCLA to, as a freshman and, and getting that win out there to now playing in the college football playoff, can you even like recap what this journey has been like for you from, from that moment to now? Uh, yeah, I mean, there's been a lot of ups and downs and, you know, all, all of our records and, and, and rings of, of championships and bowl wins, you know, they might all say wins, um, but, you know, myself and, you know, teammates and others around us in the program, you know, we've had downs too, um, but it's just been a journey and, and Coach Fick has, has always talked about um, trusting the journey and trusting the process and that's exactly what it's been for myself and a lot of my teammates. So. Um, I've had a great experience over, over my five years here, um, and I'm just hoping we can seal it off with you know, one of the, the best experiences there is. Okay, our next question will come from Joseph Hoyt. Hey, Desmond, this is Joseph Hoyt from the Dallas Morning News. Uh, Mike Denbrock talked a lot about the unique challenges that the Alabama defense brings, but you guys have a unique opportunity with having a former Alabama player. I guess in Jerome Ford, I guess, how much do you tap into Jerome's experience there or maybe against an Alabama defense? Is it kind of limited in what you can actually take away from someone who hasn't been there in a couple of years? Uh, you can learn a lot. And, and you know, he, he, you obviously see what they're like physically on film. Um, but, you know, you learn a lot from them more mentally uh, and, and, you know, how they approach the game, you know, how they're going to come prepared. Um, and he really just lets you know, you know, kind of what the Alabama culture is just so you know, we're not just hitting the face when we get out there and, you know, something may be a little different than what we think. Um, so, you know, having, having Jerome on, our, on their team, it definitely helps us a lot, and, and he's a great addition to our team. Okay, our next question will come from Stephen Hawkins of Associated Press. Hey, Des, you guys have had about three weeks since the, the playoff burst came out and you guys have heard all about what a great accomplishment it is for you guys to be here you've heard about your underdogs now that you're actually here coach fickle talked about the opportunity you guys don't want to let it go to waste talk about the mindset that is now game week and what you guys really do want to accomplish if you haven't done what you wanted to do yet yeah we're taking it day by day and um you know coach fig gave a, a great speech this morning before we came over here in our hotel um he said you know lock in from about seven o'clock to one o'clock um, and then we'll have meetings later on tonight. Um, but, you know, when we lock in from, from 7 o'clock to 1 o'clock, you know, right after practice, it's all football. And then we have meetings later on at night. But, you know, those, those other times after that, you know, it's, it's for relaxing and, and resting and, you know, having a good time with our brothers. Because, um, you know, for a lot of us, this is our guaranteed last, um, you know, opportunity to go out here and play the game of football. Um, so, you know, we're going to do everything we can to, to make, the most out, make the most out of it. Um, and also have a good time while doing it. What has these three weeks been like, though, getting ready to get to this point? Yeah, it's definitely been a long three weeks, um, especially with a little Christmas break. Um, but, you know, we played the championship game the, the first week of December um, and, and had a couple of days off there and then, you know, started to get to practice. Um, those first six, seven practices were, um, you know, it was attention to, to the older guys, but then the later half of practice, it was all young guys. So. Kind of gave the older guys who had played a lot of ball some, some time off, um, but also got good work in with it. Uh, but it, it's definitely been a, a long time, especially, you know, with the, the nerves or excitement or whatever you may want to call it, just of the anticipation of, of coming down here. And so, you know, Christmas was, was a little more exciting to, to be able to uh, open up presents with your family. And then, you know, we drove back to Cincinnati and woke up the next morning, had practice, um, and was able to fly down here. So we was all ready to go and excited. Thanks, man. Thank you, Stephen. Our next question will come from Gary Miller. Hey, Des, congratulations on getting here. Uh, going to the Cowboys game last night, what kind of flavor did that give you? Did it help you at all to experience the stadium 
ahead of time? And did you get any flack for going out last night? Uh, no, yeah. So, I mean, it definitely, it definitely gave it a, a, a good aspect of what it's going to be like. And, I, you know, when I went back home, I kind of thought, you know, it, at, at points it is going to be that loud, and at points it's not going to be that loud because um, I don't know how the tickets they are, but, you know, let's just say they're 50-50. Um, you know, there was there was way more than 50 percent Cowboys fans in the building last night. Um, so, you know, there were times where there was an interception or a touchdown where uh, this place got loud. And so I'm, I'm excited to, to to see how it gets over the, the next um, the week. Thank you, Gary. Our next question will come from Tino Lovenzi. Hey, Des, um, I, I just want to ask you about leadership. Um, obviously, that's such a big thing for you. You know, you're the unquestioned leader of this team, um, but that comes over time. Um, what, what does the word leadership really mean to you, and how does that that um, definition really carry into this, what could be your last game in a Cincinnati uniform? Yeah, to me, leadership is not only being the one person that, you know, everyone looks up to, but it's also being there for people, you know, whether that be in good times or in bad. Um, so, so for me, you know, I, I was a good leader in high school and, you know, came in here to, to Cincinnati, not really knowing what to expect as far as from a, a college football standpoint. And, um, I, you know, for the first couple months and, and time while I was there, I kind of just, you know, let things come to me and, and grew friendships and grew in our brotherhood. Um, and it was, you know, kind of towards the later half of my redshirt season um, or my true freshman season where I was redshirting at the time, um, you know, where I really started to open up, started to, you know, reach out to some of the older guys and just kind of see how, how they were leading and how they were going about their daily business. Um, so when I knew that, you know, I wanted to play my next year as a redshirt freshman, um, I could be the best person I could be, the best teammate I can be, um, and the best leader I could be. All right, our next question is going to come from Lucas Weiss of ESPN. Hi, Desmond. Thanks so much for taking the time. Um, you mentioned in your previous answer about leadership in high school. I'm just curious what it was like to be coached by, by Will Wolford and how formative was that experience for you in terms of carrying you to today where you know, you're at Cincinnati and you are the leader of this team? Yeah, no, Coach Wolford, you know, at this point, I like to call him one of my good friends. Um, you know, he's been there for me ever since I was a, a young kid in high school. And, um, he, you know, he, he's always there for me no matter what I do. But, you know, he really taught me kind of what it was to, to be a leader and how to lead a football team. Um, you know, he, he was in the NFL for a long time and has done a lot of great things in his career. Um, and so for him to, to be my first high school football coach, um, you know, it really showed me what – what an NFL player looks like, you know, how they go about their daily business. And he made sure that we knew that too, because um, we had some guys on the team that, you know, had wanted, had dreams and aspirations of, of going to play in college and then going to play in the NFL. So um, he really set the bar for me. Okay, our next question will come from Joe Deneman. Desmond, um, the, the people that have been around this team the entire season un understand how many next level players are playing at UC and will play on Sundays, even maybe as soon as next year. Do you think the rest of the country might be surprised at how many NFL players are on you, your team and will play on, on the field on Friday? Um, if, if they're surprised and they haven't been watching, you know, our games, so, um, you know, maybe the, the draft or whatever that may be uh, might help them. Um, wake up a little bit, I guess, but no, you know, we have a lot of great players and it's just a testament to, you know, the hard work that we've put in, the hard work that our coaches, our trainers, um, all of our staff at UC has, has got us to this point. Um, and, you know, we're just going out on Saturdays and Fridays and, you know, just showing what we can do. And, you know, like I said, again, it's just a testament to all of our hard work. Thank you, Joe. Our next question will come from Callum Squires of the Touchdown. Hi, Des. Thanks for taking the time. Um, obviously, on you know the most basic level, this is all about Cincinnati trying to find a way to get to the college football playoff final. Um, but does there feel to be some additional pressure of being the first non-Power 5 team in the playoff and representing you know, kind of that, that dream for other universities around the country who want to try and make it to this stage? Uh, no, not really. And, you know, for us, 
you know, we've already had so much pressure on us throughout the entire season of, of marking off the, the checklist. Um, you know, so why add the pressure of every other non-Power 5 school that, you know, that, that we have on our back? So, you know, for us, it, it's really just been about us and will always and continue to be about us and the way we go about our way and the way we go about our game. Um, so, you know, there's, there's really no added pressure on us from that standpoint. Um, and, yeah, we're just, you know, excited to get out and show what we can do. Thanks, Des. Good luck. Thank you. We have time for one final question, and that question will come from Justin Williams of The Athletic. How are you, Des? I'm well. How are you? I'm good. Uh, Coach Saban talked yesterday about kind of the challenges of, of dealing with success. This season in particular, what have you personally learned about yourself kind of going through that, that process? Can you repeat the question one more time? I'm sorry. What have you learned about yourself in terms of like the challenges of, of dealing with success? You know, that might be different than what you guys dealt, what you personally dealt with the first few years of your career. Uh, you know, just that adversity is going to come in many different ways. And, um, you know, the, the one thing I really look back on this season is, is not taking things for granted. Um, you know, we, we did go 13-0, and 0 and, you know, the season that everyone had and, or the season that everyone thought we should have and, and this and that. But, you know, there would be times where I come into the locker room and, you know, the, the celebration and the joy, and, and it's just not there. Um, you know, whether I thought I could have played a better game or didn't have the game I had. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, you know, looking back and, and, and seeing what we did, you know, it, it's something to be grateful for and, and something that, you know, teams may never accomplish and, and only strive to, to accomplish. Um, so, you know, really just not taking anything for granted, um, not taking any day for granted, no matter how good or how bad a situation may be, um, and, and just living every day as this is your last. All right, Desmond, thank you for joining us. Appreciate you being here. Please, uh, everyone, this concludes this Zoom interview session. A full transcript, along with video and audio files, will be distributed via email and posted in the Goodyear Cotton Bowl Media Classic section of the College Football Playoff Media Portal. To gain access to the portal, send an email to licensing at catapultsports.com. That is licensing at catapult, catapultsports.com. Thank you again for joining us. Thank you. Have a good day.